Well, congratulations. You're certainly on your way to being able to administrate local systems, remote systems, and then script those solutions into reusable scripts, functions, and even modules. Going forward, what else can we go with PowerShell? Well, we're going to look at using PowerShell with Active Directory, Office 365, IIS, and DSC. In this section, we will introduce you to Active Directory Administration with PowerShell, Microsoft Online Office 365 Administration with PowerShell, IIS Web Server Administration with PowerShell, and we'll look at DSC, or Desired State Configuration. We'll also look at the future of PowerShell, Active Directory Administration with PowerShell. In this video, we will cover what is required to use PowerShell with Active Directory and some basic administration tasks with Active Directory. In our console, there are a few ways that we can use Active Directory with PowerShell. One, on our Windows 10 machine, we could install Active Directory users and computers. It's a free download from Windows, and once installed, if we have the proper authority level, we can access our domain controller and administrate our Active Directory from our client machine. Another way we can do that, that we've discovered, is to enter a PowerShell session with our domain controller. From there, we can either operate inside that domain controller session, or we could use that session to import those commandlets into our client console, and then use them from there. But let's look at some different functions that we can actually do with Active Directory. Well, we can create a new user using the new ad user commandlet, and we'll give that user a name of John. Now, for them to actually be able to be enabled, give that an account password. Now, you could also just put the user has to change the password. There's a lot of different things that you can do in this setup. We're going to do the most basic just for an example. For this, we'll do a read host. We'll say enter password. And we'll have that as a secure screen using that parameter. Now, it's going to tell us that that remote computer, the domain controller, is sending a prompt request, and here's our prompt request for a password. And we're doing this in our lab environment. We're going to use a very simple password to remember. And now we have a password. We can now use git ad user john, and we see we have our Active Directory user. We do see he's not enabled because the enabled field is false. So we'll clear the screen, and we'll do enable ad account john now if we do git ad user john we see that he is now enabled now we could set a surname because we see that surname field is empty so we could clear host we could set ad user and you see how these commandlets are designed to be very user friendly as far as locating them and then what they do is defined right there in their name. This is going to set a property on the Active Directory user. And we'll do the surname, and we'll put in John's last name of Smith. Now, we forgot to put in who we were giving the surname to. And so PowerShell says, I need more information. Here, we just simply put John. Now, if we do get AD user on John, we see that John is enabled, and he has a last name of Smith. Now, what groups is John in? Well, we can use the get ad principal group membership commandlet for John and see that he is in domain users. That's the default group. But let's say we want to add him to the administrators group. We could use the add ad group member commandlet. And remember, to find these commandlets, explore the help files and use the get command commandlet to discover what's available. But we'll use this and we'll say the member is going to be John and the identity of the group is going to be the administrators. We'll clear the screen. Now we'll get AD principal group membership for John. And now we see he's in the administrators group. So we've added a user, we've set a password, we've enabled that user and we've added him to the administrators group all inside PowerShell very quickly, very effectively. We didn't have to install anything on our client computer because we remoted into the domain controller. So when we exit this session, we haven't left anything on our client computer that 
could clutter it up that we don't really need. And we have very quickly and effectively created this user, John. So if we just hire John as a system administrator and he needs to have this access, it's now done. 